Hello guys, I'm Bethany and welcome back to my channel. I'm so excited because you know what time it is. It's reading wrap up time and I'm going to tell you about all the books that I read in October. It was a very good month in like how good the books were. I had so many, <laughs> that is my dog, they're both in here laying down. So if you hear noises, that's them. But I had so many good reads. Like literally this month I read some of my favorite books I think ever. I think they're gonna be some of my favorite books that I've ever read. So I'm very excited to talk about them. It was just a great month. So I actually read 10 books nine of them are physical copies so i have quite a stack here to go through but i'm very excited i love doing these videos i love talking about books and i love watching other people's so let me know down below what books you've read in october and what you thought of them i'd love to hear also let me see is this oh there we go scooched it back a little bit let's get started shall we the first was the end of the inheritance game series so i read the hawthorne legacy and the final game bit. I actually did a whole reading vlog on the entire series, so I'll link that video below. So I won't give it too many thoughts on these books in this video, but also they are the second and third in a series, so I can't say much about them without giving anything away. So all I will say is I gave both of them five stars. I loved them both so much. The first book, The Inheritance Games, kind of ended on a cliffhanger. So you're like ready to pick up the Hawthorne Legacy to find out what happens. And then it just goes into the third one. And I thought the third one was like the perfect end to the series. I really enjoyed it. And I just really enjoyed the series. I thought it was so fun. Like if you were looking for just a fun series to read this fall that will kind of just like get you in the fall mood that's kind of like mystery but not too scary because I don't like scary things. It's more like riddles and secret passageways and all this stuff. I think you would enjoy the series. It's basically about a girl named Avery and she is just a normal girl in high school and then she is given this man who passed away his entire inheritance. He's a billionaire and then there's a lot of secrets to unfold and just a lot of things going on because she's trying to figure out why along with his four grandsons. And it's just so good. So that's the like premise of the first book and then it just continues on in these two. And then the author is coming out with another book next year from a couple of the grandson's point of view. And I'm so excited about it. But yeah, love these so much. They're so good and I highly recommend them, but I will link that video below if you want more thoughts. Should I stack them like this or should I put it like this? There we go. Next, I'm so excited to talk about this book because honestly, I've been kind of keeping a secret <laughs> from you guys. And that is this book. I love this book so much. It's literally gonna be one of my new favorites, or it is one of my new favorites. This is one of my new favorite romances of all time. I don't wanna say I was gatekeeping, but I didn't really say much about this book, but I'm going to tell you now that it's literally incredible. You need to read it. Basically, I read an arc for Fallon Ballard's second book that's coming out in February, and I loved it. I gave it five stars. It was so good, and so I was like, I need to read her first book. And this is it, it's Lisa on Love. Did I already say that? I don't know. Basically it's about this girl named Sadie and she lives in New York City and she is in need of a place to stay. So she finds a place to stay in Brooklyn, like a brownstone and she's renting out part of the house, like a room in the house and Jack lives in the house and it's forced proximity, roommates to lovers. It's just so good. I loved it so much. I thought it was so good. I feel like the characters were very emotionally mature, which I enjoyed. And I love like New York City aspect. I really think this is like a fun fall read because it is set in New York City, which is kind of fun. But also there are some like Thanksgiving and like folly themed parts of the book, also Christmas. So like it's kind of all year round in a sense, but I do feel like it would be really fun to read in the fall. I felt like the main character Sadie was very relatable. I won't say like too much about that because I don't want to give it anything away, but I thought it, she was just very relatable and I liked the friendship dynamic between her and her friends. I thought that was really fun as well. Um, I love when there's a friend, like a friendship aspect in the book and also there's definitely like found family in this book, which I love as well. It's one of my favorite tropes, so highly enjoyed that. I'm looking at my phone to make sure I don't forget anything about this book. And it also talks about like Sadie in her life and also like in her career, which is kind of fun to read about. And also you get a little bit of Jack as well. I'm pretty sure this is, yeah, this is all from Sadie's point of view, but it's still like really enjoyable. I do love dual POV, but this one is just from Sadie's point of view. Yeah, I wrote would have loved to get Jack's point of view because I just love the boy's point of view. But I do want to say that this is decently spicy. There is some spice in it. I'm trying to say it in every review, but if I forget, I will post a post on my bookstagram and every like single one I will say no spice, some spice, closed door, all that stuff. So if you were looking for that and I don't say it in my review, I will have that on the post. I try to I like to give a brief summary and then say if it has spice or not. So this one does definitely have some spice, but I really enjoyed it 
nonetheless i feel like it wasn't like too much it wasn't like unnecessary because some books i feel like it's like do they even like each other you know but this i feel like you can definitely tell the emotional depth before anything else so i loved it so much i gave it five stars and i just highly recommend it next is the flat share by beth o'leary this is actually a reread i read it last august i think i read it on my kindle and then i decided i wanted to get to the physical copy and i reread it and literally a few days after i reread it it announced on instagram or something that there is a show coming out or a movie i'm pretty sure it's a show based on this book <laughs> i'm so excited it comes out in december and that's just super fun so basically it's about this girl named tiffy and she's looking for a place to stay and ends up sharing a flat with leon so she will have it during the day or during the night and he will have it during the day and so they never really meet so they're like passing notes to each other and you know it's just so good i love how the back says what if your roommate was your soulmate there's also some definitely like friendship dynamics and like dynamics with leon and his family and things so there was definitely more than just romance in this book which i really liked and i did give it four stars i think when i first read it also the sun is you know changing around so i'm so sorry about the lighting but um i did give it four stars when i first read it and then after rereading it i bumped it up to four and a half stars because i really really enjoyed it i didn't really tab it but overall i just really enjoyed the book it is dual pov so you get tiffy and leon's perspective and leon his like the way he writes is like the way he would talk which i think is kind of fun so you're reading it as if he was talking in just the way that it's written if you've read this book you know what i'm talking about so i liked that i thought that was different and unique and i feel like in my opinion it wasn't like annoying to read it it was like easy to read and you got used to his like dialogue also this is mostly closed door i feel like there is a few like maybe innuendos which honestly that is what closed door means there is some what is it called implying there's implying that things happen but you don't like explicitly see it so i wrote on my notes like it's mostly closed door and there's no explicit scene so i would say it's closed door but just like maybe a tad bit more than like a completely closed door book do you know what i'm saying i don't know i'm so excited about this next one it's a very anticipated read for the year and as it starts with us by colleen hoover i did a whole reading vlog on this video so we'll link it below as well so i won't stay on it too long because that's rosie because I've already talked a lot about it, but basically this is told from when It Ends With Us ends. It's the sequel, and you're basically getting Lily and Atlas's Happily Ever After. That's pretty much what this book is, and I've seen some bad reviews about it, which I'm honestly shocked because I love this book so much. I gave it five stars. I think it's literally incredible. Like, it was everything that I wanted and more. Like, it was just so, so good, and can we talk about the cover? It's so cute and, like, shiny. I love it. I just loved it so much. I loved the new characters that were added. I loved Atlas that we got his point of view. It was so great. And I just thought it was like the perfect end to the series. Like I just loved it. And I also loved how Colleen Hoover talked about domestic abuse, leaving that kind of situation in this book and kind of brought light to that. I just really enjoyed it. I think this series, It Ends With Us and It Starts With Us are like such good books and like a story that like needs to be shared. I feel like it helps a ton of girls in this in a similar situation i cannot speak so i loved it and if you are not reading it because of the bad reviews please ignore them and read it because it's so so good i also loved the like friendship dynamic with her friend Alyssa and her husband marshall you see them in it ends with us and there's a few like obviously other scenes in this book with them and i just loved them so i highly recommend i think you should read it and it's just beautiful so <laughs> The next book I read on my Kindle because I got an ARC on NetGalley and it is Same Time Next Summer by Annabelle Monaghan. I'm so excited about this book because I actually saw Annabelle, she did a cover reveal on her Instagram of the book and I was like, oh my gosh, I'm so excited because I loved Norgo's Off Script by her. It's up here, this one. And I was like, I can't wait for this book to come out. And then one of my friends DM'd me, like replied to my story and said that it's already on NetGalley. So I went on NetGalley and requested it. And I got accepted and I read it and I literally loved it so much. Like I enjoyed it so much. I plan to do a whole review on my bookstagram of this as well, but it comes out next June. And I literally think it's going to be the book of the summer. Like truly the book of the summer. I thought it was so good. And I feel like Nora Goes Off Script was the book of the summer. And this one is just like so good as well. Like I loved it so much. I gave it four and a half stars, I think. Yeah, four and a half stars. And basically it's about this girl named Sam. She lives in New York City, but she has a family beach house on Long Island. And so she is going to visit there for the first time in years with her new fiance. 
and they're like kind of planning the wedding and that's kind of why they're going there and then when she's there she runs into her childhood love Wyatt it's like second chance romance which is one of my favorite tropes I love it so much the descriptions were literally incredible like you literally felt like you were there you felt like you were like surfing with her and like listening to the waves and like literally at the beach or at the beach house like you literally felt it because her descriptions were just so good i also loved the format of the then and now perspectives it wasn't like one chapter is then and one chapter is now if you understand what i'm saying if you read a second chance romance you know what i'm talking about it was more like sections were then and then sections were now which i did really enjoy in the format the now perspective is told majority from Sam's point of view and then when you do the then perspective it's told from a third person point of view so you were getting about Sam and Wyatt but it's not told from their point of view if that makes sense and then at the end you get a little snippet of Wyatt's point of view but I wish we got more of his point of view because I'm saying point of view literally so many times but I wish we got more of him in the book told from his perspective but i really did enjoy it nonetheless i think it will be the book of the summer so basically i'm telling you to pre-order the book book a beach trip and then take this book with you and you are bound to have a great time so i loved it so much oh i didn't say it starts with us does have some spice in it if you've read colin hoover you know she has some spice but i feel like it's not like that much i can't really compare it to it ends with us because i don't remember how much spice is in it ends with us but there's definitely a little bit in it starts with us but not too much but this book is closed door, no explicit scenes, pretty mild, wholesome. Next, I read Love on the Brain by Allie Hazelwood. I actually have been putting off reading this book because some of the reviews I had heard were like, it's very similar to The Love Hypothesis. I didn't really like it because it was kind of like, meh. I've also heard things about how it kept talking about the main guy character, like his like body and like all that kind of stuff. And it made it feel like it was all about him and his like physical appearance which I do agree with that part. I wish there was less of that in this book, but honestly, I really enjoyed it. I thought it was so cute and so fun. I gave it, what did I give it? 4.25 stars. I was close to giving it four stars, but there are books that I've rated four stars and I like this one more than those. So I gave it 4.25 stars, but overall, I thought it was just a good time. Like, I thought it was great. It's basically about B. She's going to, I don't know. I think, it, no, maybe it's Houston. Anyway, she's going to somewhere in Texas to work on a project for NASA and the guy that she is working with, his name is Levi. They don't really get along. They knew each other in, I think like their college or like grad school or something and they just didn't really get along. He was kind of rude to her, didn't really talk to her, avoided her, that kind of thing. And so it's, you know, enemies to lovers. People compare it to the love hypothesis because the love hypothesis was also enemies to lovers. But I feel like I didn't like this one as much as that one, but I did think it was cute and fun. Like I think if you're looking for a fluffy rom-com, you should read this book. I liked the plot, like it's very much like a plot book, like it's not just about the romance, it's very much like science, academia, about NASA doing this project, which I found really interesting. That's one of the things I loved about the Love Hypothesis was the academic vibe. I just really enjoyed reading that. I think it's so interesting. I mean, half the stuff, I don't know what they're talking about, but I enjoy reading it. So I will say there is quite a lot of spice in this book. This is one of those books I feel like where it's a little too much, like we get it, maybe one scene. If that, we don't need anything more. You know, it was a little too much. So we'll let you know that. I like flew through it, honestly. Like I read it really fast. I thought it was just a fun time and you kind of want to know what happens. The next book is Archer's Voice by Mia Sheridan. Oh my goodness. What has taken me so long to read this book? This book and Love on the Brain are two books where I have been seeing reviews and they have kept me from reading the book. And I'm like, why did I do that? So I'm telling you now, don't listen to reviews if they're bad because I feel like I listen to bad reviews and I'm like, oh, I don't want to read the book but then I end up loving the book, so don't do that. But basically this is a small town romance, which oh, I love small town romances, but this is definitely heavy. Like I feel like you should read this and then read Love on the Brain because that will be like a little palate cleanser to make you happy. This book will like, you'll definitely be happy by the end, but there are some sad moments in this book. It's very emotional. It's like one of those books, an emotional romance, you know what I mean? So basically it is about, um, what is her name? Brie, duh, it's about Brie. And she is basically running from her town where she lives. She is just running away and she finds herself in this small town, Pelion, Maine. And when she's there, she runs into Archer. He doesn't say anything to her. And basically just from around the town, she's hearing that he's kind of to himself. He's quiet. No one really pays attention to him. 
and she's intrigued. It's basically honestly like a two broken people finding healing and I love that. It's a beautiful story and Rachel Catherine raves about this book and I'm so sorry to her. I would like to give a public apology that I have not read this sooner because she is correct. It's so so good. I loved it so much. I literally flew through it. There's very much like a plot like you were getting the healing of Brie and also Archer about two completely different situations and they also find healing like together, like them coming together helps them find healing. It's just beautiful. It's just a beautiful story. I feel like you are gonna like leave this book feeling more hopeful and more at peace. And I just feel like you're gonna love it. Like, I think this is so good. It's an incredible book. I gave it five stars. Did I say that? I don't know. I just truly forgot that I was reading when I read this book. And I feel like that's how you wanna feel when you read a book. Like that you literally just forget that you're reading. I think that's so great. So I highly recommend it. I loved it so much. Archer's voice does have some spice. I felt like the story was worth it. Like it wasn't too much. Like I feel like Love on the Brain was just a little much, but Archer's voice, it was probably honestly similar spice scale, but just worth it and like not as bad. You know what I mean? I don't know if I'm making any sense, but let's continue. The next two books I literally read in the past few days. Like they took over my life basically. And they are my first like fantasy reads. I read Twilight, does that count? But this is kind of like, other world fantasy and that is dance of thieves and vow of thieves guys let's just talk about it let's just dive right in shall we i'm so excited to talk about these books because i literally just finished them and i can't wait so let's start with dance of thieves basically this is a enemies to lovers fantasy romance so i feel like if you're just starting out in fantasy you should start with the series because i think you will really really enjoy it especially if you like romance and i feel like this is like a true enemies to lovers like it's not like a oh, I thought you don't like me, but like really you were just like standoffish because you did like me. I thought you hated me. You know what I mean? Like this is a true enemies to lovers, which I really liked. I do have to say that you have to kind of give it like 40 pages. Like I remember I read like five pages and I was like, what in the world is going on? And then I put the book down and read something else. Like this was earlier in the month when I first got this book. And then I was like, okay, I'm going to pick it up again and try it. And I've been talking to my friend. I think her name's Carly. I always know people by their Instagram name. So our Instagram at is Karma Reads. I love her. She's great. And I was talking to her about this book and I was like, I need you to like help me want to read this book because it's a little hard to get into at the beginning. And she was like, give it 40 pages and then you will enjoy it. And she was correct. So I gave it 40 pages. And once the main characters meet, you like can't put it down. I feel like it's just so good and so interesting. This is dual POV. So you get literally both perspectives. Obviously that's what it means which I loved. I loved that so much. It was so fun to see like the point of view of both characters. The characters names are Kazi, Kazi Mira. I think is how you say her name and Jace. I think you should just go into it knowing that it is an enemies to lovers fantasy romance and you are going to enjoy it. So basically I gave this book four and a half stars, loved it so much. And then I finished that Sunday night. So today's Tuesday, November 1st. And I read, finished that Sunday, October 30th. And I was like, I'm going to go ahead and start the second book. So I did, Vow of Thieves. Well, first, before I say anything, I do want to say these are YA, so there's no spice, which is great. But basically, I yeah, started Vow of Thieves. And then, crap at the fan, truly, in this book. Like, literally, you cannot stop reading it. I stayed up to like 3.30 in the morning, and I didn't even finish it. I had like less than 100 pages left, but I was like, I need to go to sleep because I am going to literally hate myself in the morning because I stayed up so late, but so much happens. It's insane. Like there's not as much action in Dance of Thieves as Vow of Thieves, but once you pick up Vow of Thieves, it's literally like what in the world is going on? Like so many plot twists, so much stuff. Like you have to keep reading because you're like, what is happening? What is going on? Like, like I need to know what happens. If you are wanting some action, this book is going to give it to you, but there's also such good romance in it. Like the angst of just everything. I feel like I couldn't breathe and then I finished it and I was like, <sighs> you know, like I could breathe again. That's how I felt about this book. It was incredible and this duology is just so good. I've heard so many good things about it and they were correct. Like it's incredible. I gave the second book five stars and I just loved it so much and it makes me want to read more fantasy. So if you have more book recommendations similar to this, in the fantasy like romance genre but with the action because i really enjoyed the action obviously like i literally finished this in less than a day or basically a day and most of it in one sitting so if you can give me more recommendations i would love to hear them because this series is incredible or like this duology the first one's a little over 500 pages and the second one's a little under 500 pages so they're quite long books but i just couldn't put them down so i highly recommend them they're so so good 
and you just need to read them because they're so good. So that is my stack that I've read in the month of October. Such a good reading month. All these books are honestly so good. Like I didn't have a bad book this whole month. They were all great. So that is it. That is the books I read in October. I hope you enjoyed. I'm so thankful for you. Thank you so much for watching. If you did enjoy, be sure to subscribe. I post every Tuesday and Saturday. Might have some bonus videos up in the next few months with like holiday content and stuff. I'm so excited. If you want to follow me on my Instagram, you can do that. I also have a bookstagram where I post like reviews and cute book photos and book stacks and all that kind of stuff. It's very fun over there. I'm just so thankful for you and I'll see you very soon for my next video. Bye. Mm -hmm.